And as is mentioned in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to take the example of the previous messengers of Allah, the mighty and the majestic, as Allah has stated in the Quran. And from those messengers and those prophets, without a doubt, is Musa alayhi salatu salam. So this here is the basic origin or the basic background of traveling in search of knowledge. As for the specific origin in the time of our messenger of Allah salam, then it is that which is known as the Wufud, the delegations that came to the Messenger of Allah والسلام, They would come from outside of Medina, from different cities, different uh, provinces, different Arab tribes, and Bedouin clans to learn the Quran from the Messenger of Allah والسلام, directly, to ask him questions, to seek his uh, guidance and his counsel. They had different issues in which they differed over. Some of them, some of these Arab delegations weren't even Muslim. And they came to the Prophet وسلم, asking him questions. We've heard this. It, has it, it, has it, it, is it true that Allah has sent you to fight the people until they bear witness on La ilaha illallah? Has Allah sent you with his religion? Has Allah, the Lord of all creation, commanded you to take from our wealth, zakah, and so on and so forth? So this here is the basic background of traveling to search, in search of knowledge during the time of the Messenger of Allah والسلام, and there are several famous hadith regarding this in which the Messenger of Allah والسلام, was asked by many of these Bedouin tribal leaders uh, with regards to Islam or rulings pertaining to Islam which we don't have the time to mention all of them there is uh, one story we'll suffice ourselves with uh, is the well known story of Uqba ibn al-Harith radiallahu anhu when they asked the Messenger of Allah والسلام, regarding the issue of ar of suckling, of breastfeeding, that is collected by Imam al-Bukhari ta'ala, in which uh, he came and there was a woman that he married. And there was another woman who said that she had gave both of them, she she nursed both of them, both the companion and both and both his wife. So when the companion radiallahu anhu, when he Asked the Messenger of Allah والسلام, about this and what should he do? The Prophet وسلم, said, Kayfa wa qid. He says, How can this be? How can you stay with her? And this woman has claimed that she nursed both of you, meaning that they're brothers and sisters from nursing, which they can't be married in the Sharia. And Imam al Bukhari he said, We put the chapter heading over this hadith, Bab rihati fil masalat al nazila wa ta'alim ahlihi. Says the chapter of traveling a search of a mas'ala nazila a new happening a new event a ruling that a person needs a specific verdict on and teaching one's family and teaching one's family also we have several narrations from the people of the past the tabi'in rather from the sahaba ridwan allah alayhim such as jabir ibn abdullah radiallahu anhu Rather, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, when he traveled to the Messenger of Allah, والسلام, he made his hijrah and he stayed with the Prophet والسلام, in order to hear the hadith and to memorize the narrations from the Messenger of Allah. والسلام. However, the traveling, which we'll mention in its appropriate time, it was expanded. It became on a very larger scale after the time of the companions than it was during the time. Of them, radiallahu ta'ala anhum. And from them is the famous statement of Sa'id ibn Musayyib, in which he says, In kuntu la asiru al ayyama wal layali fi talb al hadith al wahid. He says, Indeed, there was a time I used to travel night and day in search of just one hadith. In search of just one hadith. So the next thing we want to mention or cover bi idhnillah is why did the scholars of the past, from the companions, from the tabi'een, the followers and the uh, students or successors of the companions and those who came after them, why did they travel in search of hadith? And how did this traveling lead up to the actual compilation of the sunnah? Because that's what we want to speak about and discuss. This was a major foundation or fountainhead of the actual compilation and recording of the sunnah. It was that they traveled to gather it. They traveled to compile it. They traveled to meet different people to ask, to verify, and to double check about what they had heard or which, uh, what that which they were unsure of. So, 
Well, in the time of the Messenger of Allah, the main reason, as we briefly mentioned, behind them traveling was to learn the Quran and to get its tafsir, its explanation or commentary directly from the uh, blessed mouth of the Messenger of Allah. As for when the Prophet died, then the reason why the people travel is that the Sahaba, they spread out. All of the companions didn't stay and remain in Medina. Some of them went to Sham. Some of them went to Egypt. Some of them went to Yemen. Some of them went to Al Iraq. Some of them went to Persia. And these different countries and regions, they were very far remote from uh, Medina and even Mecca or the Hejaz. So for this reason, they needed to hear from these companions. There may have been just one person from the companions of the Messenger of Allah who was alive who heard this hadith directly from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There was another reason behind them traveling and that was people began to lie and people began to fabricate narrations from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to support the different uh, political groups, to support uh, the different ideologies, the different uh, aqaid, creeds and dogma of the different groups and the sects that the Muslim nation has been afflicted with from a very early time. So we have the Rafidah, the that which is very commonly referred to as the Shia, which is an incorrect terminology, the Khawarij, in which they didn't have a big deal in fabricating and narrating a hadith. We'll explain this later on, Bidinillahi Azzawajal. However, the point that we're trying to make is there were groups and there were sects, and they saw that the most simple way or the strongest way to promote their propaganda, what they believed was the truth, was to say that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said it. Whether, as we said, a political party, whether it was a dynasty, the Abbasi dynasty, the Umuwi dynasty, or whether it was an actual religious sect, what they believed and what they wanted to propagate and spread to the Muslims and subjugate them with, the easiest way to do that was to attribute to Muhammad وسلم. And this is a proof that all of the Muslims were in total agreement that the statement of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was a dalil, was a hujjah, was a legal force, was an authoritative force in itself. So this is from the reasons behind them traveling. It's, as we said once again, to verify some things that they heard, uh, to double check, to strengthen the narration. And also they traveled later on to find out about the narrators and ask the different scholars of hadith, ask the tabi'een about this person. Who is this man in this chain of narration? Is he a liar? Is he trustworthy? What is his memory like? He told us this. He narrated this amount of hadith to us. Did you hear that from him? So on and so forth. As will be explained in a later time when we speak about al jahr wa ta'adil. When we discuss the science of al jahr wa ta'adil. And this was from the reasons behind the traveling in search of hadith, was to verify these hadith, and to ask about the ruat, to ask about the narrators and the reporters of the hadith. Uh, another reason behind them traveling was to have a shorter isnad, a shorter chain of narration. If a man stayed in his country, this is an example, uh, if he was in Baghdad, he was in Baghdad in Iraq, and between him and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let's say Imam Ahmed, okay? Imam Ahmed, may Allah have mercy upon him, if he stayed in Iraq and he had a narration in which there were four reporters between him and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, how about I leave Iraq, I leave my country, and I travel to Yemen to meet Abdul Razak, a Sanani, Rahimahullah. I can cut out one of the people from the chain one of the intermediaries from the chain. So instead of four people between me and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu now there are only three. Okay? Or if someone had five people, and any number that you can think of, he would travel instead of hearing from a sheikh who heard from a sheikh who heard from a sheikh in his country, he would jump ahead and go to the country of the sheikh of his sheikh to cut him out the line. Uh, and this is called talab al It's called seeking a shorter isnad. And from the wisdom behind this was, firstly, uh, whenever a person gets closer to the Messenger of Allah, there's a higher level of nobility. 
It's a higher level of status. For him name to be on the same